So anyway, uh, this is software. It's a tool for uh, uh, dealing with health data. Uh, and it's free software, which I believe is very important as we're trying to establish these open protocols that uh, Ruben uh, was being very clear about in this whole community uh, around uh, this uh, self-sovereign identity work. Uh, it also, and I will come back to this uh, a little bit, it's a prototype or an example of uh, decentralized governance. Uh, a lot of the problem in healthcare is that uh, governance is either seen as a state function like we have in Europe, or a big hospital function like we have in the US, or a big company function like Google or IBM saying so give us all the data and it'll solve all the problems. Uh, and uh, in healthcare, certainly, it's too broad a domain, and we really have to look beyond that to be able to decentralize uh, our governance itself. And uh, you'll see a little bit of how we're doing that. Uh, each person is self-sovereign in that they own their own hardware or their own virtual machine, and uh, everything is standards-driven because it's very important for things to be self-sovereign. We're not building a wall garden of any sort. This is purely patient-centric. Uh, and the uh, concrete example we've been working on uh, for about nine months now is a health record for homeless people in Atlanta, which is our first contact, just like Bruno was telling you about his contact with the city of Zug. Uh, this is our first contract with the EHR, the Academic Medical Center Infrastructure in the United States, and sort of introducing uh, self-sovereign technology and self-sovereign identity to them. Uh, what do we mean by... Okay. Uh, what do I mean by self-sovereign? Uh, it's personal devices that operate together. Uh, I mentioned decentralized groups that bundle policies because we all know that nobody reads and nobody is going to select 1,000 variations of uh, what kind of data about you are going to see. But people want to inherit these from a source that they trust, which would be this thing that we're calling a group. Uh, not us. We're just creating software. The groups are totally independent. Uh, there's no wall there, and uh, to a large extent, we hope that it's user financed again to promote this network effect without uh, the risk of uh, a one uh, one wall garden uh, takes off. And it, uh, I will, I'll talk about the business model for us if people have questions later. But it's the whole thing that we're doing. If you look at it as the way people do blockchains, or uh, it's very similar to that. It's inspired by that. So none of us are crypto experts. We depend on. You know, we depend on the standards, and particularly we use Uport, as you will see, uh, in order to do the crypto expertise. But we are trying to mimic the blockchain business model. Uh, the technology stack that I promised uh, to talk about, the standards, has uh, uh, private and community components. Okay, so for the personal, obviously the person themselves, the mobile biometrically secured thing that you saw uh, demonstrated uh, that Ruben talked about. Uh, we then have the agent layer. This is the autonomous thing that you also own. In our case, it's a digital ocean, ocean VM for now. Uh, and it is acting in this semi-autonomous uh, uh, way and the standard that it implements, and we've had many years of working on this in, from this self-sovereign perspective, is UMA 2.0 which is uh, basically a, an add-on to OAuth, which is the industry standard, and is how come we can now interoperate with hospitals and uh, the infrastructure that exists in place. And of course, you have storage. Uh, Ruben mentioned uh, the issue of storage in their system. Uh, uh, in addition to that, storage itself has to be standardized in terms of the language and data model, and we use the FIRE standard, which is pretty much universal in healthcare. On the blockchain side, um, we're using blockchains. We put no personal data whatsoever on the blockchain. Um, so we only use it for identifiers, uh, the IDs, for the credentials, the verifiable credentials. You'll see that in a second how we do that. Uh, Timestamping, which we can also mention. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, we also haven't figured out exactly how we're going uh, uh, to you know, finance this thing. but. Uh, this open source thing, but uh, we'll work on it. Okay, so the demo is going to show you about four or five screens. Uh, the product itself is called Trustee. Um, you'll see how Uport interacts with it. You'll see a health record accessible by a doctor and by the patient separately, obviously. Uh, uh, you'll see the consent table, which is how that UMA um, authorization server comes in. And then you'll see the group component, which is 
uh, the policy groups uh, in the form of what we call directors. Uh, so the uh, the sign-in is uh, when uh, when a physician uh, needs to sign in, and this is where the single sign-on. Uh, and the secure single sign is extremely important. Obviously, they're not going to have a separate username and password for every patient that they might run into. So they have to show verifiable credentials, either of their affiliation with a hospital or the fact that they're licensed in a particular state or whatever. Again, the policies dictate. So they click the button that says login with Uport. They see the QR code. Uh, the next screen is basically showing you an uh, earlier version of exactly the app that uh, Ruben was just showing you on the left. Uh, I, you see my face as a physician, as opposed to the patient in this case. You see that I have two verified credentials. We use uh, uh, this uh, uh, very ubiquitous uh, credential uh, physician HIPAA messaging uh, service called Doximity, uh, and we piggyback on their uh, single sign-on system in order to verify the credential. Uh, that goes into the Newport wallet. There's the QR code, and there is the message to me saying that they're going to share this uh, provider identifier uh, with the patient and some other information. That's kind of like the selective disclosure piece. Okay, so now I'm single signed in. I'm uh, in the patient's record. Uh, because I use single sign-on, we need a way to make sure that we're talking about the right patient. So this is a local biometric, right? The patient put in their own photo or their own record, it's not in any database anywhere, but this now serves that verification on the part of the physician that no matter how that homeless person, typically they might have shown them a card or have the QR code sewn into the jacket or something that at least they now know that they're talking about the right homeless person because we don't assume that the patient has any blockchain component or any technology whatsoever. Uh, and so, uh, so that basically shows you the doctor's experience. One other thing we do is uh, because uh, Uport uh, offers this capability for digital signatures on the Ethereum blockchain, the doctor can actually write a prescription directly into the system and, and it is timestamped and, and verifiable off of the uh, blockchain. Uh, now I'm going to go in as the patient and uh, the patient obviously only needs a username and password. Uh, they can certainly use Uport. Uh, you'll see exactly the same thing, it's the same doctor's health record, but now there's a green button that is the consent table, which uh, is the, the meat of the consent mechanism here. Um, and if uh, it's probably hard to see in the back, but uh, we talk in OAuth, we talk in terms of resources. Uh, here we talk in terms of the authorization server. Uh, in all auth or UMA, and you see that there are two, there are four resources altogether. One of them is the directory. I'm about to show you what that is, which is the group. Uh, the other one is the health record you just saw. This is a live link to actually my mom's health records at a large uh, Cornell Hospital in New York because they've put up a standardized API, and uh, we could do that. And down the fourth one is a live link, but to a sandbox uh, from Medicare. So this basically shows how we're not asking people to copy data into a personal data store, but that depending on what kind of standards are out there for connecting to um, RESTful APIs, uh, they can either uh, control them directly, which is the Google way, or you do copy them uh, through a proxy mechanism in this, uh, in this health record sense. Uh, okay, so the last uh, screen, and uh, really, uh, uh, I think the, the most unique thing so far uh, is that uh, we realize that being self-sovereign uh, doesn't necessarily work for two reasons. First of all, it's support, and second of all, it's discoverability. Uh, the support you can probably handle, but it's not convenient in terms of the user experience. So you want to have a site that's going to provide support for your self-sovereign technology. But more important than that, the doctors, the researchers, the drug companies, whoever, have to go somewhere and find you and search for you in the directory and either get to see some metadata about you or get to link by clicking one of those red badges if you've chosen to publish that endpoint and go to your authorization server and say, will you tell me what medications you're on? So what we've done, if I, if I, what I mean by decentralized information governance is that each directory, and uh, there can be uh,
uh, each uh, a person could attach to multiple directories, a person could detach from all directories and just support themselves. And so we believe that this ability to decentralize governance is essential to creating agency on the part of individuals. Um, and we use Uport to use verifiable credentials in this way where people, uh, as individuals, as peers, can come and present their credentials uh, in order to, uh, to be kept accountable by the blockchain uh, security mechanisms. And so, again, all we're we're focusing the self-sovereign ID on the licensed professionals here. Um, decentralized government means that uh, managed to sort of convince uh, a large academic medical center that came to us because they wanted to do this health record that this is a risk management strategy for them uh, to not control the governance of these very hard to control people because they're homeless and they also costly because they don't necessarily pay for the services they use. And uh, we are in, a, in Austin, Texas, we're working, we introduced the idea of navigators as, uh, as the nexus for, uh, you know, these are nonprofits that uh, provide services for the homeless, which would replace the hospital in this case as a way of providing support and running these directories. And a uh, very fascinating thing is that uh, in India, uh, for about two years now, uh, we've been involved with uh, what kind of health records infrastructure are they going to put in there? It's a completely green field without either insurance or a health records infrastructure. They want to provide uh, an insurance system uh, tied to Adhar, but not Adhar itself, because this is a public-private thing. It's not just a purely public uh, thing for the half million, uh, half billion Indians that they consider below the poverty line, or whatever that is. And um, we've actually had uh, success in in uh, presenting, because they have this project called India Stack, which was independent of anything we were doing, uh, but it is sort of a, an identity hub in the DIF sense for you, those of you that uh, know that jargon. Um, we've been able to actually have this be uh, part of uh, potentially, it's currently the government policy that they'll move in this direction. So I'm still having a very hard time convincing them to adopt the standards themselves. Anyway, so uh, that's it. Um, Self-sovereign technology based on standards.